Hi, I'm Linda Conley and I'm an enamel artist and jeweller and I'm going to show you today how I set some of my um, enamels that are on silver into bezels in order for them to be made as jewellery. With setting enamel, like any setting, preparation is everything. I need to finish off the setting and make it perfectly shiny um, before, ha before I actually start to set the enamel. You can see here it's got a loop that's already been soldered on um, and I have also polished the top of the rim um, so that it's um, you know just just to make it nice and neat you can see I hope that the rim is just a tiny fraction taller than the um, than the enamel I really don't want much in order to push it over to hold the enamel in place anymore and it starts to get um, untidy. I hope you can see there's just a slight gap. The enamel is slightly um, raised, uh, slightly domed. Um, I'll just show you on, on this one. So you can see it's a domed, a dome shape, and it's much easier setting domes than it is something completely flat. Because like when you're setting a cabochon, you just want to push that rim over to about there, just where it starts to go in. You must make sure that you cover all of the silver edge and you need to look at it under high magnification because it is so easy for you in your efforts to not make it too high, to find that you've got a sneaky bit of edge showing on one side. So always check under strong magnification that that isn't happening. Okay, so I hope you can see that. And you can see how it's um, recessed in the middle. Yeah. So, this, the, the bezel strip that I'm using is actually 0.5 millimeter thick fine silver strip um i like that thickness because it's um much more forgiving um it's easy to remove any um scratches um that you um, dents that you put in while you're making the oval shape um and it's nice and strong i've been th i've actually managed to file through the very thin stuff on more than one occasion Anyhow, setting. Sometimes I hold it um, with a um, in my um, ball vise, but for something like this, it's going to be so quick and easy to do that I don't bother. I use one of these, a bezel roller, and I'm literally just going to roll it all the way round. Um, just putting on my magnification. So, can you see how I'm holding it? I've got my finger on the top of it um, so that I've got full control. I'm holding the bezel rocker um, between my fingers with, and I, I like to let my index finger rest on the top. That gives me strength and I also have full control. I place it at an angle of 45 degrees to the enamel so that if it slips, it slips down rather than over the enamel. And then I'm just going to gently rock it round. This is a really good fit. I'm going to do the edge, the ends first, um, just in case, you know, because generally when you set, you want to set um, with... Uh, compass points, you know, north, south, east, west, and then do the interim um, points and fill in. Um, when you're doing an oval or anything with any corners, you need to do the, end, the, the narrow bit first. So it's easy to lose any excess metal in the straighter bits. Does that make sense? I 
I am putting quite a lot of strength in this. I do have quite strong hands. Sometimes I use my hammer um, point um, on my foldum, but quite often I don't anymore. I just do it with this bezel rocker by hand. And then I'm just going round, filling in. I do apologise for my dog. I've stopped and started it once before. Somebody's come to the door. Or they might have gone to next door's door. Who knows? Right, I've been round it a number of times and it's pretty much there. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go round the edge along the top with my agate burnisher. I don't use a steel burnisher at all on these because steel will scratch enamel whereas agate doesn't. I love this agate one. And I'm just stroking it round just pushing where there's a tiny gap it just i'm trying not to run it on the actual silver oh sorry i'm trying not to run it on the enamel but just on the silver Tiny nick there. I'm just lightly burnishing out. And I'm pushing it down so there's no gap between the enamel and the burnish and, and the um, bezel. That's pretty much done now. What I'll do next is I'll just take it over to the polishing motor where I've got a soft buff with white luxie on it. And I find that just gently rounds off any, there's a very slight edge that you can feel, but it'll just make all that disappear. The luxie is soft enough that it can go over the enamel and it just finishes the, the, the bezels beautifully. The benefit of using a white luxy rather than rouge, the traditional rouge, for instance, um, rouge is, has a horrible tendency. If there are any tiny imperfections in your enamel, it gets in and it's really difficult to um, remove. I remember years ago when I was using rouge, I used to use lighter fluid with it. Um, really noxious um, because that helped keep it out. I was It was a tip I was given and it actually did work. But the, um, the luxy is meant to be... Um, safer and more environmentally friendly and water soluble and all the rest of it so um any anything that makes life a bit safer is is always good so i'll take a photo of that so i can show it separately and i hope that helps after the setting i like to wash it um and with a soft toothbrush and some very liquid and a moat with a bit of ammonia in it and then I give it a good rinse and I pop it in here which is boxwood shavings and that's to make sure it soaks it takes out any moisture from the silver um, and stops it from staining then I get the fun part of the lucky dip to find my work where is it I know it's in here somewhere ah here it is And here's the finished piece. And you can see how the polish on the Luxy wheel has just polished out any defects. And it's all nice and shiny. Hope that helps. Thank you for watching.